Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. What's up? Not How you doing? I'm good. All right, I've got a new one for us today. I, I keep, can't wait to hear it. I keep seeing it everywhere, and I don't know what the hell it means. There's like, I'm overthinking this. There's now a course on overcoming overthinking and overthinking. Is overthinking, that, is like, thing? is that a thing? Can we actually think too much? Like, what does that even mean to you? That's what we're talking about. Well, I think people are seeing it everywhere. We should probably speak into it All a little right. bit. It's uh, it's a, it's a term that is. It's a terrible term. It's one of my least favorite terms. I don't understand what it means. It it's a weird way to say it. What people are talking about when they're talking about overthinking is anxiety and oh. fretting and like basically it's an emotional response. It's not a cognitive, you know, uh, analytical or mental kind of response. It's yeah. not. It has nothing to do with thinking, and and. There's 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 no overthinking. There's there's thinking that's in alignment with reality and works, and there's thinking that's out of alignment with reality and doesn't work. That's the only kinds of thinking there is. I see. And I see. so overthinking is just being like nervous or anxious or like, you know, running things through over in your mind over and over and over again. Maybe that's what they mean by the over yeah. part. Yeah. But it's not it's not an abundance of thinking. It's a lack of thinking. Or like a circular loop. It's like a circular loop. Like you're just flipping the switch OCD style in your head of your emotions and your anxieties and your, uh, frust- you know, whatever yeah. it is. You know, yeah. so you're fretting, you're staying up at night and running the same scenario over in your head. Is that because, but is that because. It's very different from thinking. Okay, so let's just pick on this overthinking thing for a minute yeah. because there are a couple of contexts in which I've heard it. One was um, I was actually getting a coffee on <laughs> campus the other day and two young women were talking about, I guess the one had just gone on a date. Mm. And they were talking about how soon it was going to be until the gentleman called her. You were just eavesdropping on a no, coffee conversation? It's, it's a small... I was waiting in line for coffee. They were talking behind me. It's not like I was <laughs> okay. eavesdropping. And they talk okay. very loud. Okay. They all, and half the time, they're talking on their phones on speaker. So, no, I was not <laughs> eavesdropping. I was standing in line, and they were having a loud conversation in public. And she was like, well... Maybe he should call me within 42 hours, or maybe I should relax and he could call me in 72 hours and that would be okay. Or maybe he should call, if he doesn't call me right away, then he yeah. doesn't like me. Or like, it was like so this. What whirling... part of that sounds like thinking? Right. But then she literally said, I think I'm overthinking it. Yeah. I don't think you're thinking. No. Right. Yeah. That's about what I would say is you're like not spinning. really thinking at all. You're just spinning in an emotional toilet bowl of <laughs> insanity. <laughs> There's well, no there's no thinking going on. It's just that's Okay, well that's like repetitive emotional tick. I get it. So then when we say people say overcoming overthinking, does that mean slowing it down, breaking the cycle, actually Yeah, what being would what thoughtful? would be thinking in that situation? Yeah. Which I mean really you could call that underthinking. She's underthinking. Oh. You could definitely call it that because she's not doing enough thinking. Mm. What would be thinking in that situation is why am I so anxious? Right. What what is leading to to this anxiety that I have that I have to have an answer? Mm-hmm. Right, that I have to have an answer, that I have to know something that I that is unknown. What is leading to this anxiety? What is the mental model that's leading to the anxiety? And probably it's you know. He doesn't like me, and mm-hmm. I'm not likable, and therefore I might never, you know, get, get, married. Have, get married. And you know, all this stuff is weighing on this this one phone okay. call. Yeah. So, yeah. if if you wanted to really think about it, what I would do is parse the emotion from the thinking. Yeah. So like so that you can t- not that emotion's bad. Emotions emotion is a great indicator of things, but we don't want to confuse thought with emotion right we want to we want to pull apart the thought and pull apart the emotion and then sort of sort of see what is the emotion that's driving 
things. Yeah. And then what's the thought that the mental model that's driving that emotion, right? Because you're anxious about something. You're worried yeah. about something. Yeah. What are you worried about? Why are you worrying? I see. I see. That would be thinking. So actually, the the way to not be overthinking is to slow down. Well, first, it's a terrible term. I the way to be not be an over-emotional wreck is to think. About the about the things that are causing you to feel that, that yeah. are leading to the feeling. Yeah. Right. It's not, it's, it, well, all I'm saying is it's not, it is a misnomer to say that it's an abundance of thought, an overabundance right. of thought. Right. There's, there's a lack of thought going on. Yeah. It's the opposite. So if we call, if we call it overthinking, then the, the chances of us finding the solution are, have, have plummeted to zero. Right, right. <laughs> because we, we're not going to look too much to thinking. Right. Because we already believe that we're overthinking. Right. When really we're over worrying, which is an emotion. We're over. We're over fretting. We're over anxious. Right. And the well, way out of that is thinking. Just thinking. Just thinking. We'll get you out of that. Well, and by implication, so what's interesting is by implication, if there's something called overthinking, then there's something that's called underthinking. Underthinking, I think you could make a case for. Underthinking is simply that is simply that that you're not in alignment with reality. Say more. What do you that your think that your mental model is out of alignment with reality, meaning it's not it's not it, it, when when you think like take this cup, right? Yeah. If if I think that the if I reach for the cup and I think if I think that the cup is there. Yeah. Then I'm going to reach like that. And then I'm I'm going to go like that. And yeah. I'm not going to grab the cup. Right. So I'm out of alignment with reality. Yes. Yes. I'm missing no the cup. No yeah. cup. If, yeah. if my desire is to get the cup, I have to get my mental model in alignment with reality. The cup is here. Mm -hmm. So and then I can get the cup and I can get the drink. I see. Right. So my when my mental model is right, reality will cooperate with me. Yeah. That's my cup. Yeah. I'm just so <laughs> when my mental model is wrong, then reality will give me feedback that mm -hmm. my mental model is wrong. Okay, so maybe yes, it will give you feedback and so maybe So not uh, sorry, not to interrupt okay. but with for those girls at the coffee shop. Yeah. You know, another thing you could think is if you, if you keep going on dates and they keep ending up badly. Yeah. That's reality giving you feedback. Yes. What could it mean? It could mean you're attracting the wrong type of person. Yeah. It could mean that that you're you know need to look at your own behaviors and yeah. personality traits and things like that to see if there's something that's turning yeah. people away. Yeah. Uh, it could be a number of different things. I'm not saying it's any one thing. It could be that your dating pool is not of good. Yeah, it could be that you're in People, a very limited because you're pool. on a campus yeah, or something. Exactly, it could be a bunch of things. But if you yeah. really want to solve that problem, then think about what are some of the webs of what what is the web of causality that leads to I've been on twenty seven dates and and none of them have panned out, which is why I'm so anxious about the fact that this one isn't going to pan out because he hasn't called in six hours, eight hours, right. twelve hours. And that whatever. anxiety is probably creating a self fulfilling yeah which prophecy, is, which is you seem anxious and then people pick up on it and then. It yeah. becomes a circle. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right? It's probably, probably not ending at the date, right? Well, and I also think people use overthinking as a synonym for like being overwhelmed, right? That there's just too much in well, your head. Well, it's a bad synonym. Well, I understand that you don't like the word. I'm just. It's not that I don't like the word. I think the oh, the the word overthinking is an interesting word if it existed. Right. It just doesn't – What A, I, I can't think of really of a situation where it doesn't exist unless you're talking about like beatnik philosophers in a Parisian cafe, like, you know, philosophizing about some whatever. Then maybe – Oh, just over you know, you, know, <laughs> you, know, you know, maybe that's overthinking or something like that, whatever. Oh, yeah. Right? But, but I mean, the way that it's being used is to cover up anxiety – and fretting and and repetitive emotional ticks and responses yeah and that's right. a, that couldn't be further from overthinking well so then 
you're saying that the solution to that is kind of twofold. One is realize that there's emotions involved that are that are making it seem like you're over like overly thinking it. Those emotions are causing that nervous cyclical tick, right? Yes. So so realize that. Yes. Separate that out. Yes. Look at the the way you're thinking or the mental model about it and understand what the why that mental model is leading to the feelings that you're having. Yes. And that's thinking. That's that not overthinking. Thinking that's a, thinking. Yeah. And it would be very valuable because you'd yeah. understand, oh, you know, that's why I get so anxious. It's because I'm putting a lot of weight on this date. I'm putting I'm putting, you know, my future marriage and family and kids and like my life on this date. Yeah. Well, is it really? Yeah. Is it really on this date? You know, I I maybe I need to learn new new mental models like you know dating is kind of a numbers game like you, you it's like sales like you yeah. get enough numbers and eventually you'll find one right dating is also <laughs> a you know it's like the radio you know you put out a signal you broadcast a yeah. signal and certain people are going to pick up on that signal based on what they're listening for right yeah. Easy yeah. listening, rock and roll, whatever, right? Yeah. So as somebody's tuning, they're going to pick up on your signal. Well, what signal are you putting out there? Right. Because that signal is going to pick up certain types of people. Certain types of people are going to respond to yeah, that they'll signal. They'll be attracted to it. They will be attracted yeah. to that signal. And yeah. is that the signal that you want to put out there? Is that the type of person that you want to attract? Or do you want to attract somebody else, right? So if you're looking for... A relationship and possible, you know, uh, you know, cohabitation and eventual marriage, that kind of thing, or whatever. Then, are you putting out a, a signal which is which is attracting people that aren't that, right? That have no interest in that. In right. which case, you know, the it's way it's it's a mismatch, right? So you're gonna suffer. From there it. are these mental models that you could build for yourself to better understand what you're doing and why you're doing it, and mm -hmm. then that will help you do it better. Yeah, yeah. Right? And I'm not saying those are the only mental models. I'm just saying there's, there's, there are things that you can do to, to get in alignment with reality better in this yes. situation. Yes. I also think we should be careful not to confuse this whole idea of overthinking with, um, sometimes I hear people making it synonymous with too much detail like going into too much detail of something, because sometimes detail is necessary. And sometimes you can go into so much detail that you lose sight of, you know, the the bigger picture thing that you're thinking about. Yeah. Does that make sense? So I'm trying to think of an example. Well, there's, this is the classic, uh, you know, mistake that systems thinkers make. I hear these quotes all the time from quote unquote systems thinkers. And uh, <laughs> people get real, uh, in love with these sayings and that, and then people get, you know, real, real upset if you disagree with them. But, but th there's always this idea that, you know, you're not going to understand reality by understanding, by breaking it into parts. You'll only understand it at the whole and, uh, or, you know, uh, the, all, the, all of those kinds of things are just, are just like forcing this choice of like, Systems thinking is holistic, not reductionistic. Right. And, and you know, traditional conventional science is reductionist, reductionistic, meaning breaking into the parts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not holistic. Right. Or sometimes we talk about those things as synthetic thinking or analytical thinking, right? Analytical yeah. is breaking down into parts and synthetic is break, bringing up into holes. And we're constantly fighting this battle. Right. Of is it this or is it this? Meaning, and, is it the holes or is it the parts? Yeah, like, and it, and it's yeah. this either or kind of thing. And, yeah. and and of course, you know, why choose? Because it's both. It's both, right? Yeah, like you need to you you need to do both. Well, and I yes. I don't know why people have such trouble with that. That seems just blatantly obvious that to understand reality. You have to both break it into its parts and understand it in its holes. Yeah, I know that makes And by makes the way, sense. every one of those holes that we're so interested in holistically mm -hmm. is a part of a larger whole. Right. So the systems thinkers have it kind of wrong if they think that, you know, the, the systems thinking is only holistic. 
No, yeah. Right? I see what you're saying. Because yeah. if it was, if systems thinking was just holistic, then the only people that would be systems thinkers are astronomers. Why? Because they're the only people that are looking at the the, the big hole. Oh. The intergalactic like the universe? universal hole. Right? Because every other person, if you, if I said, well, I'm an ecologist, then I could say, well, your ecology that you study is inside of a larger ecology. Yeah. So you're just being reductionistic because you're focused on a part. And that would be bad. <laughs> no, it's not bad. It's it's showing that this this kind of thinking that that systems thinking is only holistic is about the whole is a, is, a, yeah, is holistic yeah. thinking is just absurd. It's, so you're saying actual systems thinking is both holism and reductionism. Systems thinking is about both. and holes. Yes. And maybe even both. the interaction between the two. Yes. Like it's, a, really it's about the reconciling right. of both. It's about understanding. It's about taking things apart and understanding how they work as a whole. And understanding that every one of those parts is a whole and the whole is a part oh, of a larger whole. whole. Yeah. So, you know, that's thinking systemically. But it's not overthinking. No. 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 That's just understanding the system and, and yeah. understand and it's also understanding what you don't know. Yeah, and I guess the other thing I would think about is people have asked us sometimes <clears throat> like what level of detail is too much? Like if you take something and you break it down into parts and then you break the parts into parts and the parts into parts and the there's a point where it might be too much to be practical, right? It depends what you're trying to do. Right. Is the answer. So I think the answer is you go to the level of detail that that is required. That is functional. Yeah. For what it depends you have to know what you're trying to do with the information. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're trying to land a rocket on the moon, that's different than you're trying to order a sandwich. I would hope so. Right? So if yeah. you're trying to order a sandwich, maybe you don't need to know the molecular structure of the turkey. But <laughs> if you're trying to land the rocket on the moon, you probably yeah. do need to know the molecular structure of the of the fuel or, you know, right. uh, of, of the different plastics that you're using or the different metals that you're using and things like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. What's interesting from what, what – what's interesting is if you think of over – just as a term, overthinking and underthinking – like as the two ends of a, a popularly understood continuum, mm -hmm. then what's interesting is it sounds like or it seems that the guardrail to not going to either end is just thinking in alignment with reality, right? Like, yes. like being, being on the path where you're just, you're dealing with reality, you're thinking about the reality. Yes, at how's the it level working of, for you? Yeah, and like at the <laughs> level of scale that it exists. Yeah. Right. Yes. So if you have a problem set that requires two levels of depth, yeah. then that's all you need is two levels of depth. And that's not over or under. Yes. It's real. Yeah. You got to ask, how's it working? How's it working for you? And reality, it will give you feedback. Say more about that. You mean? I mean, reality is always giving you feedback. And people think of feedback is like feedback isn't like a like a like a little box that you get little slips in. No. I mean, that's a very low yeah. level form of feedback. Mm -hmm. Feedback isn't uh, isn't necessarily, you know, like when you're on stage and you get feedback right, in your right, guitar. Right. That is feedback also. But feedback is is when you bump up against reality. So when I when I hit my hand on the table, I feel the feedback in my right. in my in my thing, and if I hit it hard, I'm not, the reason I'm not going to hit it harder yeah. is because it's going to hurt. Right, because you're getting the feedback. right because I'm getting feedback. Like, oh, that's hard. Now, if right. there was a pillow there, then I would get different feedback, and I could hit it harder. Right. Right. And 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 so that's feedback. Reality is always giving you feedback. You're mm -hmm. always bumping up against reality. Always, every minute of every day. Of well, it sounds like what you're saying is. If you want to know if you're over or under thinking, then just pay attention to how things are working for you. Yeah. Right. And in whatever it is you're trying to do. Right. What are you trying to accomplish? Which requires thinking, by the way, to, to, yes. to be clear about your motive. What is right. your motivation, your conation? What, it, what are you trying to achieve? Mm -hmm. And 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 then what is the how is it going? Like, how, how are you doing in that? I think it would be I think it would be powerful for people to have like a litmus test that they can use like to know mm -hmm. if they're 
overthinking or not thinking or underthinking is, well, are the results that you're hoping to get the mm-hmm. ones that you're getting? Because if they're not, then you need to you need to think about, you know, is your is the way you're thinking about something actually matching up with the reality of what you're doing? Yes. Because if it's not matched, then you can say, oh, maybe I'm off track. Like I'm not in that guardrail. Of, yeah. I don't know. I just think that's because I don't think a lot of people have a sense of control over their thinking and whether or not their thinking is good or I don't know, good. I guess I should say aligned. Right. So people believe they're o- they're overthinkers. No. But they're, they're not over worriers. Right. That's what I'm saying. Is we. So let's not call it thinking. Let's call it a worrying or emotion or you know. Yeah, right. I mean, in other yeah, words, I understand. I think you get yourself in a cul-de-sac yes. if you call it overthinking. Because it seems like a good thing. Yeah, it seems like a good thing yeah. to get rid of over yeah. the overthinking. Yeah. Which and 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 in replacement of it will not be thinking. Right. Right? If you if you believe that you're overthinking, you're doing too yeah. much thinking, then the thing you're not gonna do is, is more thinking. thinking. Right. But if in reality, what you're doing is in an emotional, repetitive tick. Yeah. You're fretting, you're ang- anxious, you're worried. Yeah. Well, that's, has, that's not overthinking, that's over emoting. Right. Right? And the way out of that is actually thinking. Yes, and it seems like... If I just realize, like, there are a lot of online courses about dealing with overthinking, dealing with overwhelm, I think what they really are saying is dealing with the fact that you're ineffective, mm. right? Because if if you need a course to stop overthinking or stop being overwhelmed, the reason you need that is because you're being ineffective in whatever level of thinking you're doing, right? Mm. I don't know. Well, that's the feedback is what I'm saying. Like the feedback is you're not getting the results you want. And so people go and look for these courses on how to get better. And they think the problem is that they're overthinking. But really the reality is the problem is they're ineffective. And they're ineffective because they're worrying and they're not actually thinking about something. Does that make sense? Or have I totally confused the world and you? Maybe. (laughs) I guess what I'm saying is the reason there's a market for courses on stuff like this is because they've labeled ineffectiveness overthinking. They've they've made that synonymous almost. Hmm. No. I don't know. I don't know about the courses like that. I don't I don't know what they're for. I just know uh like for example, is it is it hypothetically possible that you could have uh, a person who is Anxious uh-huh. and effective. I would imagine that you that you could sure. be. Yeah. So so you could be being effective and still just be anxious. That's a good point. So then the question is, are you effective at not being anxious? No, you're not. If if your goal is to stop being anxious, then you're ineffective at that. But but you might be effective at reaching your goals. That anxiety you might be using anxiety. Mm to stop procrastinating. You might yes. be using anxiety. You might be utilizing anxiety as a tool, right? Yeah. But it would be helpful to know that that's what you're doing. Like, oh, I'm creating anxiety to motivate myself to get up. I'm, I'm right. creating anxiety to motivate myself to stop procrastinating. I'm creating anxiety to motivate myself yeah. to right, but the only way avoid... You're gonna- Certain thoughts or whatever. But the only way you're going to know that is to think about it yeah, and to try to get to the, the root cause, no, just to the cause yeah. of that. And so, and anxiety is not good for you over time. Like, it's not good for a person to be anxious a lot. That's not healthy. Yeah, probably not. So you want to use thinking to disentangle that emotion from what you're considering thinking to be much more. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I guess what I'm saying is you get to decide whether you want to be an anxious person. Because yeah. I know, for example, I I've used stress mm-hmm. to motivate myself. Yes. Yeah. You know, right. As an ADD person, you do that quite a bit, right? Because yeah. because otherwise you might 
procrastinate to the last minute. So you create stress early so that you yes. meet deadlines, things like yeah. that, right? I mean, that's why we create deadlines in the right. first place. And so I know that because I've thought about it, I understand what I'm doing and I do it purposefully. Yeah. That's different than just being like a, like a, like a, you know, somebody that's not aware of what they're doing and it's making them very unhappy. And yes, that's very different. So I wouldn't say necessarily that stress or some of the anxiety that comes from stress is always bad. I would say that, right. that it's it's bad if it's happening to you instead of you're happening to it. Right. That makes sense. I mean, if you want to use terms like bad and good, like it, if if you're not in, if you're not if you don't have any agency in it, if yeah. it's always just happening to you, yeah, and you don't have any awareness of it, that doesn't feel very good. Right. So I think I think the difference is it's helpful or it's harmful. Like it's helpful. The stress that yeah. you're creating is helpful. It's helping you motivate and it's helping sure. you get things done sure. versus it's harmful because you're not aware of it and it's constantly affecting you physically, emotionally, yes. and it's sort of the way that you exist. Yeah. Right. That's different. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. Maybe I'm overthinking it. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. There are a lot of terms out there in like, popular world about thinking, overthinking being one of them. And ironically, we need to think about what they actually mean yes. and the veracity of what they For mean sure. before we just buy into them as a concept. Yeah, there's a lot of pablum out there. Pablum is like, you know, empty calories, you know. So like goop. Goop, yeah. <laughs> Manufactured. There's goop. a lot of goop yeah. out in the thinking space. Yeah. Uh, that is, you know, just the, the notion that there's all these 30 different kinds of thinking, like yeah. critical thinking, and that they're all yeah, different. Yeah. Th that alone is enough uh, goop to fill the whole central, c central area of a grocery store. Right? Yeah. It does. Because you're supposed to shop the edges where the no, no goop is. Yeah, that's but, right. Um, that's right. Right. The yeah. center of the store is all goop. Yeah, that's right. Because there's like produces on the yeah. end and then the meats. Yeah. And, yeah, that's true. I hadn't thought about that. The whole center of the store is goop. It's all the manufactured stuff. Yeah, just stay in the processed stuff. Yeah. Just stay out of that. It's yeah. like grain. It's the feedlot of humans. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, and there's liquid goop in there too, right? Yes. Right. There's lots of everything else. The good stuff is all on the edges. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess maybe the the point is, you should question these things that are being handed being handed to you about your own thought, your own thinking process, yeah. and your no, own thought. I was just saying that, that there's a lot of pablum out there. Yeah. There's also a lot of snake oil out there at, yeah. on on thinking, and yeah. um, you just gotta you gotta you got to th what you said like you got to think a little about what what does it mean yeah, you know what is it. what does it mean that there's analytical thinking where you break things down and synthetic thinking where you group things together you know and and that we have to choose one right why or that they exist in that? some why would we have to choose yeah. one why wouldn't we do both yeah well my favorite is where they believe that they go in a sequence a sequence yeah like you can't be analytical before you've been yeah. you know like these pyramids, <laughs> these pyramids yeah, yeah. Things, that, drives right, me that crazy. always turn out to be wrong in science so i think i think the point is you need to think about how people are framing these things for you and question them and and be more um thoughtful yeah about what people are saying about how you're thinking yeah, I mean, I think, you know, our barn has a flag on it that says, think yes. it's patriotic. And I, I I really believe that. Like, thinking is the ultimate, the ultimate patriotic sort of, like, yeah. uh, freedom kind of thing. I mean, we should think for ourselves. We yes. should we should think yeah. about everything. Yeah. For our I've got this amazing brain that can think. Yeah, ninety billion you know neurons and a nearly infinite number of connections. You know, it costs us nothing to think, maybe a little bit of calories, but uh, you know, it costs us virtually nothing. Yeah, it's free for all the benefit. It's free, yeah. free. You don't have to buy anything. You know, it's you got this like. It's your best thing. Engine of 
stuff up here that you can just do anything with. And and if you just learn how to use it, you know, and it's crazy because we, you know, kids have to go and get like Carter is getting his license. You know, he's got to get he's got to take tests and learn the rules of the road and, and you know, uh, whatever you call it, the temporary license and. Eventually get the, the learner's permit, whatever, <laughs> and then and then he gets the regular license. Mm -hmm. There's manuals. Yeah, that's yeah. just for driving. Just for driving. That's but a lot. Nobody does that for thinking. Nobody does that for your brain. That's nobody true. says, "Hey, kid, you've got this thing that can do amazing things. Here's the manual. Here's how it works. Yep. You should totally use it. Yeah. You know, that's right. nobody does that. No. We teach them a critical thinking course sophomore year if they're lucky, and yeah. we go, okay, we're done. Like now, they you're gotta, now you're a thinker. Yeah, yeah. Good luck with that. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why aren't we spending every day of every year in school teaching kids about their brain and how and how it works? Because they're going to use that brain yep. for the rest of their life. Yeah. To deal with their emotional issues, to deal with their anxiety, to deal with their jobs, to deal with their family, to deal with all the different things that make up a life. They're going to use that brain to do it. That's right. Nobody gives them a manual. Nobody teaches them about that brain. That's true. Nobody connects the, the, the importance of that brain. Yeah, Nobody connects how time. much all the chemicals that, that are around can hurt that brain. Yeah, that's right. Including goop. I think, I think you're right. I think it's their best tool to yeah. get through any and everything. And we need to really focus on understanding oh, cool. that. And that is a good place to land. That's it. That's it. We're going to call it. it. It's time. Crash cart. That's a wrap. Mm -hmm.